Hello? Are there any fusion fans there? Are you still with me? Yeah? Okay, let's start off. Welcome to the power rankings. Of course, after a nice May Melee tournament, we've had a fantastic week of Overwatch as per usual. But this week was extraordinary with all the elimination matches and stuff. I hope you really enjoyed it as much as I did anyway. I thought it was fantastic. So many exciting games, great finals all around. Um, so let's jump into the power rankings following an exciting May Melee tournament. I think this is going to be pretty standard, okay? We're going to have pretty normal rankings following some teams beating each other, etc. So let's jump into the power rankings and you can judge for ourselves. So starting off with North America, let's talk about the top three. Philadelphia Fusion, they fell to the Florida Mayhem in the semifinals going into the finals. And well, that just means that they have to be number three, right? Fusion fans? Uh, yeah, I guess so. That just makes the most sense to me anyway. So Philadelphia Fusion at number three. You know, I thought they brought their A game pretty much. They played a lot of different styles, a lot of different compositions. Carpe was popping off mainly against the LA Gladiators. But I feel like when Carpe was matched up against the composition that For the Mayhem were playing, Carpe just didn't have enough room to work with. I know there was a stat card out that compared Carpe stats to Yaki's Tracer stats. I think that comes down mainly to compositional differences and Carpe just couldn't find an opening to really have an impact on that match overall. I think we saw when Carpe played the Widowmaker on Shrine on Busan, he had tons of impact, but throughout the series he couldn't really find that. And honestly, that's a big part of Philadelphia Fusion's game, right? So. Falling to the Florida Mayhem, you know, it's tough. It's tough for the Philadelphia fans out there. I know you've been harping on me to get number one for a while, but it doesn't look like it's coming anytime soon with a break coming up. So Florida Mayhem fans, rejoice. You are at number two. I don't think there's any doubt uh, about this at all. I think when you've had such a successful tournament run, in a tournament like the May Melee, you've beaten the opponents like the Philadelphia Fusion. You just have to give credit to the Florida Mayhem. And I don't think there are a lot of people out there that disagree with this take. That Florida Mayhem deserves to be number two after an impressive performance like this. Yaki did tons of stuff on the tra his Tracer primarily. I know that some teams struggled to really adapt and play a Brigitte accordingly and try to shut him down. So... You know, that makes uh, other teams look pretty poor. So, Yaki, fantastic Tracer. BQB had a lot of impact on the Widowmaker primarily. I think he made a big difference. But then also, he played heroes like McCree and Ash. So, very good looks from this team all around. Gargoyle, rising in the power rankings when it comes to the off-tank as well. Fantastic performances on the Sigma. Great value. There was a stat card out there. I'm sure you've all seen it about how he topped a lot of the stats when it came to the Sigma gameplay in the May Melee tournament. So, fantastic things ahead for the Florida Mayhem. Uh, rejoice about this position. This is a huge accomplishment for this organization. They preserve, uh, like, the, the amount of perseverance, I mean, being able to stick with this team through everything and now finally being at number two, I mean, that's a huge accomplishment. So, congratulations to everyone who's a fan of Florida Mayhem and the organization itself. Um, but, of course, at number one, it's the San Francisco Shock. I mean, they won the whole thing and they really show that their peak level is there. Um, you know, I like the adaptation coming out from Rascal as well. He played some nice heroes throughout the series against the Florida Mayhem. He even was on a Tracer for a little while. And, you know, it was, you know, Rascal's Tracer. But uh, the fact that he played Torbjorn and adapted to Yaki's Tracer was so nice. We saw some of that flexibility, some of that variety. So I love to see that. He also played some May, etc. So love having Rascal as a part of this San Francisco team to really serve as a strategic and tactical player that can change the dynamic in a match. And he made a big difference so far in this match as well. Then you had players like Super really stepped up on the Reinhardt, made some hero plays on Legion Tower, borderline unstoppable. So San Francisco, number one. They remain number one. I trusted in them, I believed in them, I thought their peak level was very high, so they are still the number one team. It's not because I'm a fan of the San Francisco Shock. You guys have to realize they are now this good, okay? It's not bias, it's just facts, okay? And I hope this tournament showed that. So I try to structure my rankings as much as possible on the eye test and then looking at results and comparing the recent results, you know, going back a few weeks, etc. It's power rankings after all. So I hope you guys realize this, that I'm only trying to do it as fair as possible with data available, and then, you know, there's some eye tests involved, etc. But I try to explain to my best of my ability why I rank the teams the way I do. Um, if you are unclear about that, then that's on me, because ultimately I need to provide the context 
uh, that I base my date on. Anyway, let's move on to the APAC region, which had a pretty exciting May Melee tournament. Obviously, I was asleep at the time because I had watch point to sleep for before the next uh, before the next day, so uh, I couldn't really watch these games in live, and I really regret not doing so because I mean these were some fantastic matches. So I had to wake up before watch point when we were rehearsing for the show, etc. Skim through the matches and see what was going on in the APAC region, and I mean the finals, the reverse sweep from the Shanghai Dragons, it was magical. So love what I seen from this region. Definitely recommend you go back and watch those games if you didn't have the chance because you were sleeping or something else. So great matches all around. At number three, it's the Guangzhou Charge, and they had a close matchup against a good Seoul Dynasty team. And I think New York Excelsior and Guangzhou Charge, they are sort of battling for this number three, number four spot. Because every week, it's like week to week performance basis. One week, New York Excelsior is better. They show some diversity with their compositions. And then other weeks, you have the Guangzhou Charge really showing a good peak level. There were so many uh, weeks in recent history where the Guangzhou Charge looked like one of the better teams in the region because they were able to dive so effectively. And then you have incredible players on this roster. I mean, players like Shu. Uh, and then the entire DPS lineup, of course. So there are great players on this Guangzhou Charge roster. But then you have New York Excelsior, right? And it's like Jonax, Saibiolbi, Libro, Mono. Mono is still one of the most consistent tanks in the Overwatch League, right? So the, both of these teams are head-to-head. -head. I was a bit disappointed to see New York Excelsior fall to the Shanghai Dragons the way they did. They showed a lot of different compositions, but I didn't completely agree with what they were playing. But without a doubt, they still have the individual skill, right? So New York Excelsior, they're still hanging in there. They're still a good team in this region. Uh, this region is closer than ever so love seeing it at number two it's the soul dynasty okay and this might be a bit more controversial than some other picks because to some soul dynasty don't really have the recent results required i know they did really well in the main melee and that's why i put them at number two right because they showed that they can now play dive compositions as well as their bunker compositions we've harped so long about the soul dynasty how they're playing double sheet and looking so good with that but now also they showcase a gesture on the winston he's back to his uh to his uh, 2018 form and looking good on that hero um, and that makes a big difference because now you have some versatility on this roster and you can still remain at that peak level right so still haven't showcased the best echo play and that you know hurts this team a lot but i think when they did so well in the main melee tournament you have to rank them at number two and then in the future weeks guangzhou new york i mean the door is open you could totally just defeat the Soul Dynasty, and then we're back at it again, where we don't really know what Soul is going to bring to the table. But after a successful tournament run, I think Soul deserves number two. Especially because they went so close with the Shanghai Dragon Strike. Soul could have won that series. They could have won the finals easily, right? So, really head to head. But Shanghai, they won the main melee tournament in uh, the APAC region, and they remain number one. I mean, what a performance. I mean, you, this team... I mean, the resilience and mental fortitude in bringing back this series and reverse sweeping, just phenomenal. There were so many players that popped off. I mean, Lip, Fearless, so many good players on this team. So they remain the number one team, very impressed by the Shanghai Dragons. And I just personally can't wait. I'm really hoping we get to see some matchup between the likes of San Francisco Shock and the Shanghai Dragons soon, because these are the two best teams in the Overwatch League. But we can't really determine who's the better of them, because they're both really good. So, uh, love what I'm seeing from the main Melee tournament. Uh, anyway, let's jump into some questions. We're back with the Ask Reinforce segment, so let's do it. I picked out three tweets this time around, uh, and I want to go through them. So, there is a lot of stuff going on in the middle of the rankings, because, of course, the quarterfinals, semifinals, it's a bit of a cluster, and we have to go through that. So, I picked some questions out for those teams specifically. The first question comes in from Quinn. Uh, at the meme master 50 uh, very creative nice nickname I do appreciate that uh, do you think Houston has a chance to climb in your rankings depending on the meta now the Houston outlaws they're a bit of a complicated team in my opinion because they are really good at stuff like dive compositions and that's where Muma really shines but then as of recently I mean, we've seen more of Hydration playing that main tank role. And they haven't looked that bad. I mean, honestly, when they lost to the Dallas Fuel, I think, and many other analysts think, that Houston Outlaws looked good in that series. It was just the fact that Decay came back 
and just popped off on Widowmaker and put in one of the best Widowmaker performances as of recent, right? So the Houston Outlaws, they are looking like they are a better team every week, in my opinion. So I think that the Houston Outlaws could climb in the rankings. Now, but going into the main melee tournament, I would have said, right, like, I think Houston Outlaws, when they are playing dive, when they can put Dante on heroes like Tracer, Sombra, Echo, etc., that's when they really shine. But with Hydration on the main tank role, I don't really know what their strength is. Like, what is their best composition? Is it Brawl? Is it Bunker? Is it Dive? I think it's a bit up in the air. But what I do appreciate with Hydration is they look more like they're in sync with each other. And I don't know what if there's been any difference in the shot calling structure of this team. With Hydration in, maybe you get a new sort of energy on the front lines and maybe... He fixed something that Muma couldn't really do and contribute with. That's very much possible. Muma hasn't been one of the best main tanks in the Overwatch League for a long time. So maybe this is a breath of fresh air for the Houston Outlaws. And I'm wondering, like, what is their peak level? Hydration, look, he's not the best main tank in the league either. But if he can fix some of the things that maybe Muma did wrong internally, then I think the Houston Outlaws could climb with that. So... The Houston Outlaws, in my mind, rem uh, remain a very interesting team. Uh, it's going to be so interesting to see what they do in the second half of this season because they have the pieces required, in my opinion. I mean, Jex on the Lucio and Tam for a bit and got some frags too. Um, but they need to find an identity, and I think putting Hydration on the main tank could be a path for them to sort of reinvent themselves. And that's very important for a team. So excited to see what the Houston Outlaws do. Uh, anyway, for our second question. Uh, randomness 2, I believe that is called. Random mess. Okay, random mess. Well, okay. I know that the gladiators have been disappointing as of recently. However, do you see any potential? Where do you see them in the future? So, the LA gladiators, another team that really stood out in the main melee tournament in my mind this past week because they played so much dive. And throughout the tournament, we saw mostly bunker compositions. And we saw teams trying to rely on maybe some tracer play. Ash is really good at shutting down ba uh, bunker compositions because you can lob in the dynamite. And then you can blow that up over the shields, right? You can throw the dynamite over the shields. And that's why it's so effective. But the LA Gladiators, they stuck with a lot of dive compositions. And they liked putting OG on that Winston. And he looked phenomenal on the Winston. I mean, OG's Winston is a thing of beauty. Especially me as a main tank main. Being able to see how OG utilizes Leap as a cooldown. And jumping to like ledges to get space. And using it as an escape mechanic. It's so good. And then you have space on the off tank as well. Who's a fantastic player. Uh, you know... There were some arguments whether he performed or not against the Philadelphia Fusion. Um, Carpe got so many pulse bombs in on Chaz, and that was a big reason why the Gladiators fell to the Philadelphia Fusion. I don't know how much blame you can put onto Space for that performance, how much he should peel in that scenario. Um, but I found the LA Gladiators very interesting in that regard this tournament because of how much dive they played. So I think they looked phenomenal on the dive composition. I think it was maybe a bit of a freak accident the way they lost to the Philadelphia Fusion because Carpe just popped off and they just couldn't stop Car uh, Carpe. Now, there are a few things you can do to shut down a Tracer. We saw the San Francisco Shock. They pulled out the Torbjorn, right, because of the turret. Uh, we saw some teams pull out the Brigitte to try to peel free reflex support. Uh, we see some teams play uh, McCree as well. Uh, so there are some teams you can deal with Tracer. But the Gladiators really couldn't do it effectively. And that brings in a lot of questions, right? But I think overall, I was impressed by the LA Gladiators. And I do think they have the talent. I mean, Shaz is a good flex support. And I think the tank line has tons of potential in this team. Mirror as well has been a great echo so far. But he has a tendency to die a bit too much and go a bit too aggro. So Mirror could polish off that play a little bit. Birdring's Tracer especially against the Washington Justice, was supreme. It was really good. But then when you go up against the Philadelphia Fusion, things change a little bit. So this is a very interesting Gladiators team. I definitely think they have the pieces. Um, and they showcase a very unique style where they play pretty aggressive and do a lot of fun um, shot calling. So I enjoy watching them. I want to say that they have a really high peak, but we need to see those performances. So I do think they could climb in the rankings. Um, I'm pretty bullish on the Gladiators, but 
it's they've had some weird, wacky results as, as of recent. So it's really hard to assess where they are at. But I believe in the Gladiators moving forward. I think they have the pieces to improve, definitely. Um, our third and final question for this week, anyway, comes from Place for Days. Place 4D. Uh, do you think London are the dark horse in the main melee tournament? So, of course, this was a question going into the main melee tournament, but I still would like to talk about London a little bit because in this ranking, I put London Spitfire in the bottom of my APEC, uh, APEC rankings. I don't think it's entirely deserved because I think they have some good pieces and they looked really good against the Shanghai Dragons, okay? I think Shanghai looked pretty poor in their quarterfinals against the Lono Spitfire, but I still think Lono Spitfire looked good, and they looked on par with teams like Chengdu Hunters and arguably the Hangzhou Spark, right? So I think when you judge the seventh, the sixth, and the fifth team in the APAC region, it's so close, so I don't want to put Lono Spitfire fans down here by ranking them at seventh. I don't want you to be you know, upset about this. I don't want you to be sad about this. I think this team has potential and they have some fantastic pieces in this team. They have Glister. They have Bernard. Um, so, and all those May, uh, I, I believe it was all those May that popped off as a reason. So, um, they have the pieces to work with. I would love to see them pick up some new piece from maybe uh, the former Vancouver Titans or maybe upgrading a few positions overall um, because the London Spitfire is an interesting team with a lot of potential. But I really want to highlight about how I think that they have that potential and I don't think ranking them at 7th is something you should necessarily read into. Uh, I think the Chengdu Hunters are also on the rise and I think Chengdu Hunters have impressed and had some close series as of late so uh that would be a fantastic series to watch Chengdu london to sort of see them battle that out similarly i think the hang chao spark is a team that you could take down um in the these current circumstances i think hang chao disappointed against seoul in the quarterfinals and now would be a good time to strike i don't know how much architect is going to change things for the hang chao spark but now is sort of the time to surpass some of these teams like Chengdu and Hangzhou. And I definitely believe London Spitfire could do that. So I hope that sort of answered your question, Place for Days, that I think that London Spitfire has potential, and I don't think you should read into them being at the number seven spot in my APAC ranking. So, um, you might be wondering what we're going to do moving forward, because now we have some bye weeks for the Overwatch League, and there won't be any matches, so I can't update my power rankings. But, you know, I've been trying to experiment with some fun ideas and see what we can do. And I think it, what we'll do for next week is you will be able to submit your power rankings to me on Twitter, right? And then I'll judge your power rankings and we can see where we disagree. I can point out some things I do not like about your power rankings and other things I might like. And maybe see, yeah, you may you maybe have a correct idea here. So uh, we'll see how that works anyway. Uh, make sure to use the hashtag AskReinforce. Make sure to tag me at Reinforce and make sure to tag at the Overwatch League. So the template for the power rankings, okay? I believe it's going to be tweeted out by the Overwatch League account. So when you see this tweet that says reinforce power rankings after the main melee tournament, there will be a follow-up tweet talking about here's a template. You can copy this. You can write in your own power rankings. So use that template and submit it at Overwatch League at reinforce. Uh, and uh, maybe I'll take a look at it going into next week and I can judge your power ranking. So I think that's a fun idea we can do for next week. Again, thank you so much for the support. I'd love to hear what you have to say in the YouTube comments down below. Make sure to like the video as well and subscribe to the Overwatch League channel. So thank you so much for watching this week. Much love as always. I have you have a, I hope you have a great few uh, bye weeks off, of course, and continue to uh, live life in quarantine, play some video games and all that good stuff. And my best wishes to all of you for watching, and I'll see you next week with some custom power rankings from the fans, okay? Take care. Freaking fusion fans.